Welcome to the Dialogue Book Report, where we talk about literature of interest to LDS readers. I'm Andrew Hall, an editor at Dialogue, a journal of Mormon thought, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan. Today I'm joined by three authors whose short stories have appeared in the new book, The Path and the Gate, Mormon Short Fiction, edited by myself and Robert Rowley, and published by Signature Press. The authors are Derek Jepson, the author of The Curse, Danny Nelson, the author of Narrow is the Gate, and Stephen Peck, the author of Sister Carvalho's Excellent Relief Society Lesson. So, can we start by giving us a brief introduction of each of your stories? Derek. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, The Curse is inspired by two things. Um, one is just a specific religious problem I am interested in related to patriarchal blessings. And the second is I had just finished reading East of Eden, and I had read Middlemarch not long before that. And so, I was really interested in these ideas in these large epic stories. And I was wondering if it would be possible to do a multi-generational family saga in what ended up being 12 pages. Um, I don't know if I succeeded or not. I've, I've spent a lot of time second guessing submitting this story. I, I, I've i often thought in the last few months or I guess a couple of years now that I maybe should have done something a little stranger or a little funnier or whatever. Um, and then I intentionally designed this what i thought was an ambivalent ending um and i saw it going one way but when andrew accepted the story he interpreted the the ending in a very different way and as i reread the story yesterday for our conversation um the emotional experience i had in the last like three pages was exactly what andrew told me he experienced and not what i had intended so I guess the ambivalence worked. <laughs> There's more than one way to read this story. So um, anyway, that's the story. It's a multi-generational family saga. And even though I complain about this all the time, a lot of it takes place in, or the middle section takes place in rural Utah, even though I've said we've had more than enough rural Utah stories. <laughs> and that's mine. I'll pass it to... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so my story... Um is uh if if Derek is looking at thing uh, the about patriarchal blessing mine is really looking at uh revelation the idea of revelation and how it interacts with culture uh and so the basic premise is that aliens come to uh salt lake and they're kind of excited to meet uh the prophet uh but uh there's this there the 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 current Mormon church and the uh, the aliens have a different idea of what revelation really should be, and so it, it causes a number of different problems. Uh, and it's it, it reflects a, a fascination I've had for a really long time about how how truth can last over many different years and many different cultures, and and what happens to the idea of truth. And so those are kind of the ideas that it, that are playing with in the story. Uh, my my story takes place in Pleasant Grove, and I think what I'm trying to do is to see the people of Pleasant Grove in their full quirkiness, uh, reflected in in my my main characters, one from Senegal and one from from Israel, and it's it's about the way that we get caught up. I think sometimes in Utah Valley and in small problems because we don't have big giant problems of uh, that are going on in other places in the world and and so the 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 story centers on a on a couple of sisters who are selling essential oils and have divided the ward into to competing territories and and uh, so that's the basic premise of this well, how about do you guys have any questions for each other about your about the stories? I certainly do. Um, I'll start with you, Steve, since you just spoke. Um, I was thinking about your story today. I was at a special ward council meeting after church today, and because our ward recently underwent um, a kind of emotional crisis, and and I was thinking about uh, Sister Cavalco's lesson. And how I don't, I don't want to give too much away about it, but it's such an intense experience, and it's intense in a lot of different ways. Like it brings that uh, she finds every possible way to make the experience intense, and it it forces the saints in her ward, the sisters at this who experienced this relief study lesson, to 
um, grapple with themes like um, mortality and morality and and what does it mean to be a community and how one hour can really change people in a lot of ways and um, and it's a true cathartic moment and I think that one thing that um, we could use more of in Mormon literature is catharsis. Mm-hmm. I think it's something we should we should dig into more often. So that wasn't that wasn't exactly a question, but um, but I just I just love that, and I I think it's just so interesting how I, I guess maybe if I, if I have to ask a question, Steve, this will be it. You can choose yeah. to answer it or not. <laughs> but um, one of the things that's strangest about it, and that you do right up front, is you have these two characters deeply integrated into the ward in. Pleasant Grove, who are about as foreign as they can be. They're from completely different parts of the world with very different experiences, and they're not even members of the church, and nobody quite grasps that. Um, (laughs) So why them? Why those characters to tell this story? So so they they come out of my past a little bit. Uh, I did a sabbatical in Vienna at the UN, and um, a couple of things interested me was, first of all, how absolutely similar humans are all over the world. I worked in Senegal for uh, several years studying taxi fly eradication. And as I got to know the people, I, I just I grew, I grew to realize how much we all are alike. And that's underappreciated in some ways. I, I remember an experience in a, a Vienna pub with a group of Tetsi Flyer researchers, and one was from Israel, uh, one was from Yemen, one was from uh, Iraq, uh, one from Belgium, one from Germany, and me. And it was interesting that we all had our peculiarities. Uh, the uh, the Mos- Muslims and I didn't drink beer, so we we had soda. The the uh, the People, the Islamic people, were um, not eating pork along with the 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 Jew from Israel, and uh, we were eating schnitzel, uh, the German <laughs> and me, and and so it was it was interesting. We all had our peculiarities, and we all had our religious or cultural uh, affinities towards things. But we, I, what I remember most is how hard we laughed that night together, and. And to me, it was it was an interesting experience, and th- that's where my characters came from. They they're 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 sort of a blending of lots of people. There's no individual that anybody would recognize. But my 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 time in those places w- working gave me an appreciation from people from all over the world, and and they came into my story. So I really like what you said there because it. it coincides with the question that I had for you because you were talking about how you know like there's all these things that connect us and uh, and and one of the things in your story that I thought was just really quite clever was that the um, kind of the the backdrop Mormons could could be <laughs> almost any like they they're they're very they're they're beautifully drawn but they but they have there's sort of like a timeless quality to it you know it's like it, yeah. you get sort of the the broad view of it I wondered a little bit. Um, if there was something particular being said about Mormons or some, more something particular being said about human being, uh, especially as it got towards the end and, and there's kind of that, as, as Derek was saying, really intense moment that's really juxtaposed against kind of the, the sort of the softness and the sweetness that's expected. And I, I was curious if you were you were kind of playing around there with the culture or just saying something about Mormon in general, or if it was more of a larger scope. Yeah, I, I think I was. I mean, I think especially especially uh, Mormons in Utah Valley, the the way that we uh, interact together, it has a certain flavor and, and certain expectations. That expectation of of hyper niceness and 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 you know, don't rock the boat kind of feelings. And it, w- when the bishop um, comes to the main character, because he thinks he was a former bishop, he's actually, he's actually trained theologically at a, at a Islamic university. But so he had, he had wisdom to impart, but the bishop was a little confused about the sources he was using. He thought, well, it must be the Old Testament because, you know, I don't recognize any of these. Right. And, uh, and to me, in some ways, seeing this is 
in in essence my culture in a way this is this these are the the people of pleasant grove which <laughs> you have roots there so <laughs> uh and and i think i was trying to make uh trying to see ourselves through other eyes because it's um it, it's sometimes hard to see ourselves as others see and we are we, the, the 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 classic fish don't know anything about water because they're immersed in it they can't see a world without water or what's above or below it and uh i i was trying to draw a, a picture of how f- different we are <laughs> and strange when in certain interpretations so yeah when, when uh, i was talking to andrew shortly after i think it was this this was after the first batch of stories came in andrew and you were telling me that something you were surprised by was how few um stories there were with speculative elements and i think you expected people like me and steve to <laughs> do things like that um the only story that i read in the collection before i got my paper copy was yours danny and the reason was because um we were proofreading the pdf and I really wanted to read them all, but no, they're not proofread yet. I'm just going to wait for the paper copy. But Danny's was right after mine. So I finished proofing mine. And then I read the first few paragraphs. I'm like, I have to read this. I <laughs> got to keep going. Uh, and so I read Danny's too. And um, and I think part of the reason I've been self-conscious and, and second-guessing my choice of stories is because Danny, like, I love your stories so much. And it's very much the sort of thing um, I, I kind of wish I'd written because it's it's weird and it's really funny and it's it's got aliens and it's it's got all the different things that I love to write and um and I, I but you're it was so beautiful um what I love most is how um actually there's a lot of things I love about your story but but I'm just going to talk about one thing that is kind of sideways from most of the story most of the story is about this relationship between these Latter-day Saint aliens and Latter-day Saint uh, the Latter-day Saint prophet in Salt Lake and their interactions but um, throughout, there are other characters, most notably the president of the United States, who feels stuck to be in Salt Lake while this is happening because she can't go do other things because there's aliens on planet Earth and they're in her country. She's got to be there. And um, and she's, uh, you know, trying to find ways to keep herself busy. And the, I, I think it's really helpful to have her also um, just as a contrast. And, and I'm curious, as you were writing the story, maybe it's been too long. I don't know if you can answer this, but like, how did she show up? Like, was she there from the beginning or what was her purpose when you first saw her or how did she surprise you? Uh, I think a little bit. I, I, I was surprised a little bit about how much I liked her. Like the more, the more the, you know, the character kind of started developing more. I was like, wow, I really, this is one of my favorite people I've ever written. Um, but yeah, the, the whole story, there's so many different elements that, that kind of inspire this but a lot of it comes from returning to utah after being away for a really long time and really being outside of the culture and coming back and being like on one hand being like oh yeah i remember this and on the other hand being like wow this is this looks so weird like it's it's a very you know there isn't anything like wrong about this aspect of the culture or this response or whatever but it's it it is just it's it just catches you up every every so often that you're you're like wow that's that's really surprising and and coming with my husband had never ever experienced it um and and just kind of seeing how how different things get interpreted where you know he'd be like oh this that's stupid and i'd be like well it's this thing it's that thing or, you know and trying to kind of like this is how we got here and without knowing that and so because the main story is so much about um how do you like how sort of how do you like recognize truth outside of culture and and is that even possible or is truth only you know comprehensible in terms of the culture that you live in and so the the president needed to be there simply as a person that could be like i'm not i'm not even connected and i and and at one point she gives kind of the the messaging that really kind of drives everything to its conclusion uh because she's kind of from the outside so so yeah it was uh, i hadn't expected to make it that point in exactly that way but it turned out to be a very useful character for that purpose 
I, I loved your story too. I, I had the same reaction Eric had, you know, like, oh, I wish I had I had written this because it's brilliant. It's really, really brilliant. I, I love the way it unfolds. I, I, I love the how unexpected and awkward some of the the conversations are with the prophet and the aliens. It's just it's just it's just brilliant in in execution in the way it unfolds, everything about it. And the the um ending is just fantastic i'm not going to give anything away i mean this this that ending is just delightful i mean and unexpected too i i I didn't see it coming but when it came it was like oh this is perfect this is this is the end i mean it was it was fun and then i i i I wondered about um if the question that i had was you really are doing some sophisticated things with truth. I mean, in interpretation and translation and and, and some of the things I, I, I teach philosophy of biology. I want everybody to read this story just because I think, I think what you do with truth and the concept of truth is important and and really interesting. So how did you come up? How, what 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 what? brought about this this interest in truth and translation and trying to to work through the 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 sort of the intricacies of of uh of learning another culture learning another uh, another uh world it was it was really it was really just a lot of fun but there's some genuine depth to this story that that it deserves to be widely read so well, first I will accept all of your compliments, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, the the origin of this is actually really old. Um, I well, really old now. I, I when I was in institute at Weber State, uh, we were taking a class, uh, and um, the at some point someone we were talking about eternal marriage, and uh, at some point somebody just mentioned in kind of the same way that you you often mention things that are like oh here's a fun fact that i know and they were talking they they mentioned about polygamy in heaven like that you know there will still be polygamy in heaven and our instructor said oh yes yes and we were writing things up on the board it's like well but don't really put that up on the board because we're not they're they're telling us not to to teach that anymore <laughs> and uh I, it was it was such an interesting moment to me because I was like, huh, <laughs> even it, and, and and not in in like a kind of, it wasn't like oh mind blown or oh the truth has left me or whatever it wasn't one of those moments but it was just sort of like a, well that's interesting that's an interesting space because either it's not true anymore or it never was true or it is true and we are comfortable not talking about it and and. Yeah. those yeah. moments where that happens you know like where, yeah. where there's this kind of like awkward sort of weird thing that we're like well yes it's there it's part of the tapestry but we don't really want to look at it we don't really want to to think about it too much perhaps it, it's much more smooth if the culture kind of moves on from that and i thought then i've often had the thought of you know what would happen if somebody was confronted with it if somebody mm-hmm. you couldn't escape you couldn't say oh no or we've changed the culture or whatever um and and so that's really where the the origin of the story came from so it's something that i've sort of been tossing around in my head for a really long time well you you handled it magnificently i mean it's really really um just a, a delight to read in that sense too because it was it it, it had so many levels i mean it's just a fun story in itself i mean the, the, the but the, the the there's depth and it's exploring genuine questions i think about those topics so well done it's <laughs> <laughs> very kind of you i i should i would be remiss if i didn't say how you know adept both of your stories were yeah well. I, yeah uh, i was especially uh, i was thinking of yours um and and you were you were kind of like that scope of you know like families and then and and think in terms because because I had thought about uh, patriarchal blessings it's sort of the same way as as picking through the story and so I resonated with a lot of the the things that, you know and the the ending of yours is I think quite brilliant <laughs> um, in in, in sort of the way that it kind of like throws everything right back at the reader. 
And, um, uh, the, but the thing that I was wondering of yours, because yeah, it is about patriarchal blessings. It's also about a, a, a fairly recent thing that happened within the church. Um, and again, don't want to give too much away, but, um, I, I wondered if like the, the recent thing, maybe you can't talk about this in, in sufficiently veiled terms, but if the recent thing that happened was sort of like the, the germ of the idea, or if it just gave you a, a good avenue to talk about kind of these larger issues of, of the blessing and so forth. That's a great question, and I I don't remember one one of um, one of the reasons I think I felt awkward about the story is I just happened I'd written the story a few years I guess it couldn't be that long ago because it mentioned something that happened in 2018, but it felt like it had been years ago because it took me that long months and months and months to go from having written it to typing it and then the same time I typed it Andrew issued the call and I was like oh well I think this might be applicable and then he said yes right away which is not what editors are supposed to do <laughs> and so and so then I was like wait wait we're done that that's enough and so um yeah it was it was a a real role but it's a good question <clears throat> the um the story is inspired by something from my own patriarchal blessing which has not happened and and I, I think, I'm not certain, but I think, Danny, that yes, when the statement was made in General Conference, um, changing the shape of one of the church organizations, I think that um, that got me thinking and led me to my own like personal story. And I, and then the Gregopolis has helped me explore it. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I loved your story too. And with you were concerned about up front about the trying to cram a, a multi-generational story into jail. It worked. It totally worked. Oh. I mean, it, because it set the context, the opening character of the book is really interesting, but the way that it unfolds in terms of the next character that, that comes along, it was important to that. I think, it, and I think that worked completely. I, I, I had no qualms about it. Thank you. But I loved your dealing with the patriarchal blessing because I had the exact same. I this resonated. I mean, this this was like like a, a resonant moment as I read because, yeah, I think uh, it, it, and maybe maybe we're all there. Maybe that's the point of patriarchal blessings is to <laughs> it, is to fail so that we can you know <laughs> learn who we really are. You know, like this. This thing we're handed isn't it. This is the, the, the thing we're handed is to learn who we are, to to ask the right questions, to discover that. And so for me, that your story had that effect on on me. It was it was really, um, almost almost spooky to me in a way. Uh, I'm I'm waiting for the moment in general conference where it all gets cleared up for me but, <laughs> i know it's they crossed. say that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah the, the 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 story was it was really well done and i think it's going to make people think and i think it's important that they think about those those very questions so nice <laughs> they, thank you yeah i mean i the number of people who died without seeing jesus when they told they were going to see jesus come and like um, even yeah. if it's not something specific, there's there's so many people who've had to grapple with these questions of what does it mean to have something promised to you, right, right, and yeah. and, and especially like like your character, for me, I've kind of been waiting for it to 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 come my whole life, and you know, so far I, I don't think it will not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, wait, what an interesting question to explore, though. So in that sense, it was speculative, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Maybe so. You yeah, opened yeah. a new world where. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do feel I should justify one thing. I, I did one piece of research. Um, I asked a friend of mine, Scott Hales, um, poet, comic maker who works for Church History, to read the draft, and and specifically, I wanted to tell me because I knew he goes through old records yeah. whether my the patriarchal blessing my character receives is the english was too bad like the the fake like renaissance english was was too wrong he's like no it's not wrong enough you need to make it worse so i made it worse <laughs> so i have historical i have historical reasons for how badly the patriarch mingles the the language so well, you know what's funny <laughs> though is 
my patriarchal blessing was done by a President Howard too. It's the oh. same name. Hey, so I was like, that was part of the spookiness. <laughs> so I have a question. Uh, I I sense a little bit in um, in Stephen's work uh, uh, an inherent criticism. Uh, you know, culture of the outlook, things like that. There's certainly a criticism or two in mind. Mm-hmm. I didn't really feel that there was as much of a criticism in yours there. Um, in in looking at it. and and I guess it's a larger question of, um, in a in a in a culture in a Amelia where it's like you don't you don't criticize or if you or or that you or that the culture like suggests that you keep things sweet or or, or whatever like like do you see fiction how do you see fiction operating in that space both for readers as well as describing the world yeah it's been interesting to get feedback on this story because um i thought i made um my main character kind of subtly but obviously racist for instance um he has like he he's not a perfect person he's got some issues um and i really thought that the the way i spun the ending that most people would feel that um my character was um kind of absurd and he was not getting what he thought he was getting that he was too old and people would not see him as as a fulfillment of his blessing but that's not how people are reading it people reading is much more uh fulfilling optimistic story i was really afraid people were going to read this not not afraid like i i can deal with it but i thought people were going to read the story and say oh uh theric is suddenly very disenchanted and attacking the church but that is not how people are reading people are reading (laughs) quite the opposite way which i find really interesting and i don't know if that's because um maybe danny the answer to your question is deep down inside i have no criticisms i love everything everything's perfect and no matter how hard i try to um to be ambiguous ultimately just uh, the world is the world is pan gloss for me um i don't know it'll be interesting to hear as as the book becomes more widely read um i mean not every story of course will get mentioned in every review but i'm curious if i get enough reviews to see if just how people do react to the story because um so far but so far, I think the way the way you're describing is kind of all the feedback I've gotten. And it's funny because it's not the story I thought I was writing. So I'm curious how that'll turn out as time goes on. Good. So everybody listening, read my story first and let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are lots of, of the different stories that are in the book. Um, you know, a lot of them are about just kind of Mormons living their lives and uh, maybe a little bit about how Mormon culture affects them. Uh, but all three of you are really, it was really about uh, doctrine is really a big part of it. Mm. I mean, I mean, Stevens is, is, is really about repentance um, in, in the end. And, and there in Danny's these kind of these big questions of, of, of prophecy and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, the, the, yeah, a, a prophecy, and, and Theric's about about blessings. So I thought that was interesting. You guys, you know, really, you know, jumped into the doctrine of this instead of just kind of showing Mormons it, it with it with kind of a daily life thing. Um, I don't know. Do you, do you have any questions? Any comments about that? About the the desire to kind of really take on the religious aspects of Mormonism? Uh, I'll jump. I'll go first. I, I think that one thing that is true of our stories, and I think is reasonably sayable about Latter-day Saint culture in general is that, um, well, I don't know if this is true, but, but at least my lived experience is that you can't get far away from lived experience without intersecting with doctrine. Like we are, we are a people who believe in, uh, both hierarchies and individual freedoms. We believe in, uh, ongoing prophecy and we believe that everything is very clear from the top and we have to follow the rules and engaging with life as a Latter-day Saint, I think does require uh, just recognizing that um, the doctrine is never far away. So I I think there are moments where we can ignore it and moments where we have to pay attention. That's maybe something our stories have in common. These are moments where the characters are forced to grapple with these important doctrines you're talking about, Andrew, and they, they just can't set it aside. It's here. You have to deal with it. Life goes on, but the doctrine is part of that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think I think that's if, if for me. It, it's funny the way that things appear and and disappear in my my story because I I never I I I've never I don't think maybe this is I shouldn't speak in absolutes, but I I I feel like for the most part the story comes out of me fairly organically so that that the things that concern me are part of my dna mormonism it's it's that that wrestle that i have with trying to fit in with the culture in some ways i don't fit other ways that i i i can't live without and this tension within me these stories come out and and things like that like like if you if you had asked me right up till the point I'm I'm writing the final scene in the lesson if this was about repentance I wouldn't have seen it coming at the end I, and there it was yeah, yeah it's there that's 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 the 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 message but um I think so I never I've never my stories don't come with a point that, you know this is a lesson that that I'm trying to talk about but it, they appear just because that's that's the culture I'm embedded in and that I know best and that I'm at war with in a way I mean you know that 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 ultra niceness that 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 tendency we have to join multi-level marketing schemes you know all these all these kind of weird things about what 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 we as a people do is um is always present to me in a way and so they those things come out so I, I guess I'd say say that it it wasn't intentionally about repentance but repentance is such a deep part of of our culture that it 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 just was there <laughs> if that makes sense see and how this is well, I was just gonna say it's kind of the great thing in your your story, Stephen, where it's like it's a doctrine lesson, and and there's this this thing that you play with where where there's this moment where um, I think I can give this away. Uh, it's there the the sisters are all very excited because they're going to get an object lesson, and <laughs> the 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 contours of that are so cultural, but the purpose of that kind of object lesson is always doctrinal right and in the right. states it's always like we're going to teach you something pretty big and it's supposed to be big important and, and valuable related right. to the things we do but it's it, it's so it's so like created in in this space where it's like oh yeah we're going to do some fun cooking or something <laughs> that uh that that when that when that expectation slams into the fact that there is a real actual all the adjectives I want to use will give it that away. Uh, there's just this real kind of powerful thing that's being talked about about reality and and how doctrine, like how the best doctrine interacts with that. It's just, it's this really nice kind of space to, to talk about something that is super important. And we always say, you know, we're always like, yes, this is a thing that we believe, this is a thing that we follow, but when it comes down to it, when, it, when it's actually in practice, that it's not always the case as, as you, as, as, as you kind of really beautifully depict. So for me, uh, the, uh, so the larger question, Andrew, that, um, uh, when, when, when the first kind of theme came out where it was like path and gay, that uh, I thought, well, yeah, that's, that's the doctrine, right? Like that's what we tell ourselves. Like, this is the way to get where we're going. This is, this is how to achieve happiness, eternal families, that sort of thing. And, and and all of the other kind of like lived moments along that path are are outgrowths of that. I guess I'm just basically repeating what Derek said. But uh, that that this the basic theme of this does seem to suggest looking at the doctrine and seeing basically where it leads us. Yeah, yeah, and then and, and that's that's kind of what I believe, and I and I hope comes out is this sense that. That doctrines aren't floating in the air like Platonic forms in some sense, you know, the form of a triangle or a chair. That they're embedded in reality, and if they're not, there's something 
I think really wrong with with the doctrine. If it's not earthly, then I think it, there's trouble, and and I think that's where 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 I think we we need to think harder about our dogs and how how what does it mean for earthly humans to believe these things and and things like that and and Eric's uh, story got that too I mean that that sense of patriarchal blessings are holy objects that the that the patriarch gives them a, a mini lesson in this is what this is this is for your whole life this is you know these are you know I, I don't think you use these words but I think these are your marching orders in a sense and and suddenly you're confronted with this I don't have any control over most of this stuff so so yeah yeah so I I I, I, I do kind of want to embed the things that I believe in what it means to be a human I think that's what's so haunting about Danny's story too, yeah. um, because the prophet is forced to confront that maybe he, you know, it, he's he's bumping into people who seem to take the faith a little bit more literally than he does, and that raises real questions of what what does it mean to live this life, this doctrine, this according to this way that Joseph Smith set up, and it's it's um. It's a difficult question, and and some people are better at and and he and and um, his uh, is is Holyoke his first counselor. Mm -hmm. They just have different ways of dealing with this problem, and we recognize those types. <laughs> they they both have advantages and disadvantages, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. and I, I I loved in the story the way that um, I'm trying to decide if this is a spoiler or not, but the. The, the the prophet's kind of glee that that he gets to answer some questions because he loves answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> that read that the viewers should read this because that that comment will make more sense. But it's 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 I don't know. It's exactly right. What 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 brought him joy to finally answer some alien questions was that they were questions <laughs> and he was yeah. good at this <laughs> <laughs> well danny steve and Thurk, thanks so much uh for joining us and thank you so much for these stories everybody go out get this book read these stories and all the others in there it's really quite a collection and thank to thank you to all of you for listening to the dialogue book report this show is part of the dialogue podcast network a collective of independent podcasts that promote inquiry into all aspects of the LDS tradition and includes wonderful shows like Face and Hat, fe featuring Aaron Brewster and Eric Jepson. This show is produced by and edited uh, by Daniel Foster Smith, who also provides the music. Uh, our content manager is Emily Jensen. And to hear more, go to dialoguejournal.com. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. For making this possible. Yes, thank you. Greetings, my name is Rebecca Deschweinitz and I'm thrilled to serve as a board member at the Dialogue Foundation and as one of the hosts of Dialogue Gospel Study. In each episode, which we record live the second and fourth Sunday of every month, we welcome esteemed speakers from a variety of backgrounds to share their insights and perspectives on the Come Follow Me lessons. Our aim is to spark meaningful conversations about the scriptures, to connect them to our personal experiences and to our understandings and explorations of the gospel. To stay in the loop with our upcoming lessons and this opportunity to engage with Mormon thought, culture, and belief, be sure to visit DialogueJournal.com and sign up for our newsletter. By doing so, you'll receive updates and timely links to join our live stream lessons. Additionally, you can catch up on our past guests and episodes by subscribing to Dialogue Journal on YouTube, Facebook, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Podcast Network.